Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Assembly of God in Pensacola. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. So glad that you have joined us. We look forward to uh, worshiping together this morning. And we want you right where you are just to join with us and worship the Lord because we know that he inhabits the praises of his people. So worship him right there as we worship together. Darkness tries to roll over 
over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken No, I won't be out of the closet and decided that I would sing a song this morning that really uh, goes right hand in hand with the message that I feel the Lord has laid on my heart. So I um, want you to be blessed. I certainly am really rusty with the accordion. It's been a lot of years since I played it very much. In fact, I've drug it all over the country and uh, as a young evangelist and, and sang and, and played the accordion. But uh, anyway, here I am with it this morning and I hope that you will receive the song that I'm about to sing, Till the Storm Passes By. In the dark of the midnight have I oft hid my face while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious Lord Hear my cry, keep me safe till the storm 
passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe till the storm passes Many times Satan whispered, there is no need to try, for there's no end of sorrow, there's no hope by and by, but I know thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll storms never darken the skies till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe till the storm passes by oh till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Oh, hold me fast and let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. It's prayer time in the service, and as we come to the Lord in prayer this morning, we want to remember all those who are sick, those who are going through all that they're going through with the uh, COVID-19. We know that God is still on the throne and that he answers prayer. We do have a good report from Brother Greg Mundus that he is improving, and uh, we just thank the Lord for that. So just continue to keep him in prayer that the Lord will completely heal him. I know that there are those in the church that I have uh, talked with you and you have prayer needs. I've prayed with you. But this morning, we're going to just take all these needs to the Lord. So right there where you are, let's join together in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning that we can come to you in the holy name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because we have confidence in you. We know that you're there on the throne and that you will never leave us. You'll never forsake us. You'll never fail us in any way. We thank you today that our hope is in you. Our faith is in you. Now, Lord, we pray for those this morning who are still battling with the uh, virus. We ask, Lord, that you will touch them and minister healing to their bodies. And Lord, I lift up to you those in our own congregation, some that I have talked with even this week, who need prayer. And Lord, we just lift them to you now as we're joining together and believing God 
because we know that, Lord, you are there with each of them. And we thank you for that today. Continue to lead us out of this, uh, com- this disaster that we've been going through. Lord, we just ask that you would make a way and bring us safely through. We ask it in the name of Jesus, and we give you praise. Amen and amen. Now it is uh, offering time in our service, and I want to encourage you, if you have not already uh, brought an offering by the church, or if you've not gone online or used the various ways that we have available to, to give, we encourage you to give during this time. You can drop the offering off anytime during the office hours, and that's from 8.30 until noon on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Also, you can mail to the church address, and so we encourage you to do that. Online giving is at PensacolaFirst.com. So why don't you become a little more tech savvy? I have to admit, I'm not there yet, but many of you are, and you are giving online, and we so appreciate that. Others are texting to give. 84321 is the number that you will use. Now, this morning, I want to get directly into the Word of the Lord. And as we come to the Word of the Lord, I want to talk to you about when the storm passes by. I'm taking you to Mark chapter 5. We're going to read verses 35 to 41. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea Obey him. Now, as our text unfolds today, Jesus had been teaching all day. Now the night has come. He and his disciples get into a boat, and he says, let's go to the other side. Jesus, being weary in his body, finds a place And goes to sleep. May I say to you this morning, sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is go to sleep. But your body needs rest. I was looking again through Psalm 23 this week. And Psalm 23, as all of us know, says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Sometimes when the Lord makes us take a break, we are in green pastures. It seems like everything is going great and we need to be out there doing and doing and doing. As most of us men are, we seem to be fixers. We want to fix everything. We want to fix everybody. We want to make everything good. But uh, sometimes 
The best thing we can do is just totally rest in the Lord. Now, while Jesus is asleep, a storm comes up. The wind is blowing furiously. The waves are tossing the boat around. And not only that, the water from the sea is now coming inside the boat. The boat is filling up. And they are afraid. As they are in the middle of that storm and they see all that's happening and they're trying their best to navigate through and they're trying to get rid of all the water that's coming in, they find that they have come to the end of themselves and there's not anything left that they can do. And so they go to Jesus and they wake him up and they say to him, don't you care? Don't you care about what's going on? Have you ever wondered if God really cares? If God really is seeing what's going on, if he understands where we are? And you begin to question, Lord, where are you? Jesus simply gets up and he says, peace, be still. And then the Bible says there was a great calm. Now, earlier in the passage that I read to you, it says there was a great storm. There was a windstorm. There was waves. There was a great storm. When we're in the midst of the storm, we often know how great the storm is. But when God steps in and he speaks peace, we do not realize how great the calm is, how great the peace is that he brings to us when we've been in the middle of a storm. We're in the midst of a great storm right now. You may be saying, Lord, why did you allow all this to happen? Where were you when all of this broke out in China and went to other parts of the world and why didn't you keep us safe? Why didn't you allow us not to be affected by all of this? I recently listened to a sermon that David Wilkerson preached several years ago in Times Square Church. He had a prophetic word for the church. And as I have always had great regard for David Wilkerson. He's gone to heaven now, but he often said, I'm not a prophet, I'm just a watchman. You know, a real prophet does not have to proclaim that they are a prophet. They will be known by the fact that the words that they speak are prophetic. David Wilkerson over the years, had many visitations and many times that he had a word from God. And this was no exception. I'm not going to attempt to preach the sermon that David Wilkerson preached. But I would like to take you to Isaiah chapter 24. He took a lot of the verses there, and I'm not even going to start with the ones he started with. I want to take you down to verse number 5 in Isaiah chapter 24. And it says, The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the curse is has devoured the earth, and those who dwell in it are desolate. Listen to that. Listen carefully this morning. I think that if America would have continued to live as a Christian nation, God could very well have kept us from having all of this calamity that has come upon us but we have chosen our way and it's been happening over the years 
we decided that we would take prayer out of the schools. We would take Bible reading out of the schools. And then we wonder why there are guns in the school. We decided that we would allow abortions and them to be a a legal thing and even funded by some of the government's funding. Oh, my. I believe that when God looks down upon America and sees our sins and all of the things that we have turned to, God sees that we have broken covenant with him as a nation. Now, I'm not talking about the church because I believe that there is a remnant of people that are going to hold on to God and they're going to hold on to the covenants of God and live by the word of God. But you know as well as I do this morning that this nation is not the nation that it was just a few years ago. As I reflect back upon my childhood, the fact is I learned to pray the Lord's Prayer in my first grade class in a public classroom. I, didn't, I wasn't taught it at church. I was taught it in a classroom where we not only heard a Bible story and prayed the Lord's Prayer, but we said the Pledge of Allegiance as well. All of those things were embedded into us that we would be godly people. But as I look at these verses and it begins to say the earth is defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the law. They've changed the ordinance. They've broken the everlasting covenant. God keeps covenant with us. He will be true to his covenant, but he's depending on us to be true to his covenant. We are the ones who break it. Let me look further down in the chapter, verse 7. The new wine fails. The vine vine languishes. All the merry-hearted sigh. The mirth of the tambourine ceases. The noise of the jubilant ends. The joy of the harp ceases. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. Does that not look somewhat like what's going on right now when all the bars have been told that they have to close their doors and all of the singing and the dancing and the drinking and all of the carousing that was going on has been stopped. Read on, verse 10. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none may go in. Does that not sound like a quarantine? Doesn't that somehow relate to us as where we are? There is a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city, desolation is left, and the gate is stricken with destruction. When it shall be thus in the midst of the land among the people, it shall be like the shaking of an olive tree, like the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. It sounds like a terrible time that the prophet Isaiah is speaking of. You may say to me this morning, Pastor, are you sure that Isaiah was talking about the time that we're living in right now? I can't promise you that that's completely what he's talking about. I'm sure there are other times that it can refer to. But I was taken with how much of this prophecy looked so much like what we are going through right now. But in the midst of all of that, I was reminded of a wonderful passage in 2 Chronicles 
chapter 7. Now, I know we know verse 14 very well, but I want to back up to verse 12. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayers and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Solomon had just prayed the prayer of dedication for the temple that had been finished. And God is saying to him, I want you to know, Solomon, I've heard your prayer. Now listen to what he says. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. God says, when I do these things, you see, sometimes the things that come upon the land is not something the devil has done, but it is something that God has allowed because the people have turned their back on God. And he said, I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to get you to look to me once again. And then the wonderful promise that comes to us in verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. Tonight, or this morning, we need the hand of God to come, and to touch our land. We need God to heal our land. But we need people who will turn back to God in repentance and will turn from their wicked ways and will call upon the name of the Lord and that we will come back with an offering to Him, an offering of thanksgiving and an offering of praise to Him. In fact, let me take you back to Isaiah chapter 24 once again. And this time, I want to look at verses 14 and 15. He said, they shall lift up their voice, they shall sing. For the majesty of the Lord, they shall cry aloud from the sea. Therefore, glorify the Lord in the dawning light. The name of the Lord God of Israel in the coastlands of the sea. This is a complete turnaround from the picture that was painted for us earlier. Now he is saying, after all of this has happened, when the people has realized what has come upon them, there is going to be a shaking. And then they will begin to call upon the Lord. And they will begin to lift up their voices and sing to the majesty of God. This morning, you may be sitting there and thinking, oh my, I wonder if it's going to get worse before it gets better. How much more can we take? Hopefully things are going to turn around and we're going to be able to get back to doing the things that we were doing. Listen this morning, I hope that we will not just get back to doing the things that we were doing. I hope that we will come back with a new desire to come closer to God than ever before. To come to Him in repentance and pray, oh God, that we will never allow this nation to fall into the condition that it is in today. But we're going to stand up and we're going to be counted for what is right and holy. We're going to stand up for righteousness in a land where we thought that it's all going down the tubes. Let me tell you this morning, we don't have to give up and allow it to all go down the tubes. It's time for God's people to stand up and say, Enough is enough. And we're going to call upon the name of the Lord. And we're going to believe for a mighty revival that will come in this land. I was looking also in the book of Joel chapter 2. 
And in Joel chapter 2, it talks about the locusts and all of those things that are going to come upon the land and destroy the land and all the desolation that would come. And I'm not going to read through all of that for you this morning. What I want to do is bring you down to where there is good news. Go with me to Joel chapter 2 and verse 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The, fresh, the threshing floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame." Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Let me pause just for a moment. I know that probably many of you saw some of the same things that I have seen on television this week. And I was disturbed when the governor of one of the hardest hits, well, it is the hardest hit state in the United States. When he was talking about that we were going to come to the end of this, and he made this statement. He said, and we are the ones that are going to make it happen it's not your prayers and it's not your faith that's going to bring it. We are going to make it happen. I almost wanted to think, God, he's sticking his finger right in your face. Let me tell you, it's a dangerous thing to come up against God and God's people and God's faithful people who pray. There's a lot of people praying across this nation right now. And I believe that we are beginning to see a turnaround. Yes, all of the social distancing we've done, the quarantining, I'm sure that all of that has had an effect. But I believe that there are people who are calling out to God and God is hearing from heaven. And he has made the promise. He said, I will heal your land. And I'm believing this morning for the healing of this nation. I'm believing for a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God. Let me take you back now to Joel chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up with verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. I usually take a pause right there and say, by the way, I'm still seeing visions. And he says, and also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. When's it going to happen? When God has heard the cry of his people and he's driven back the pestilence. He's driven back the plague. He's driven back that which has come upon the land because people have prayed. He said, afterward, 
It shall come to pass, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now you may say, well, I think Peter took that text on the day of Pentecost and said, this is the fulfillment of that prophecy. Well, I'm sure that it was the fulfillment of the prophecy. But guess what? Many times the prophecies that are given are, are given the fulfillment in stages. And there may be a fulfillment that will come and then later on we will see again another outpouring, another fulfillment. Thank God for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Thank God for the mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Azusa Street around the turn of the century in the early 1900s. Thank God for the move of the Spirit that we have seen in different places. But my friends, I believe that God wants to bring a revival to America and to the world in these last days that this is harvest time. This is time for the harvest of souls like never before. And so that God in his power and glory will send the Holy Spirit and men will be drawn to him. We'll not just be receiving an outpouring of the Holy Spirit so the church people will feel good, but rather that we are filled with the Spirit of God to fulfill what the Lord said when he sent us out in the beginning. He said, after that you have received the Holy Spirit, you will be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. It's time for God's people to get busy of winning the lost because we're almost to the end. Do you know a people in your neighborhood? Do you know a people in your f circle of friends that are not ready to go to heaven? Do you want Jesus to come and them be left behind? Do you want them to go to heaven with you? Then we need to make an all-out effort to go to where they are. Don't wait for them to come through the doors of the church. Go to where they are and let them know that you care about them. Let them know that you want to help them. And God will direct your steps. And I pray that even this week that you'll be able to make a contact, even by phone, to someone and to say, I'm thinking of you. And I'm praying for you. Who knows what God may do. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over you before we leave this morning. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the promises of your word. I thank you, Lord, that we are going to yet see the hand of God outstretched. And now, Lord, I pray your blessing upon your people today. I pray that they will be blessed in every area of their lives. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep their hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen.